started here. Welcome to the stream today. <laughs> uh, I'm Milo and this is a video game. Right, 3DO company. Yes, this is not on the 3DO, but it's made by the 3DO company. So this is Portal Runner. I'm not getting any audio. Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, Portal Runner on the Game Boy Color. Uh, this is like the handheld version of a PS2 game. Um, I'll explain more about it as I go on, but let's check out the options. Um, normal, easy, oh gosh. Let's go easy because that'll help us get through the game quicker. Credits, wonderful. Handheld games, yeah. Very non-specific um, studio name there. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I should say something. Um, Gibbons in chat, hello. Sorry to hear about your uh, employment woes, but uh, hopefully you get some opportunities through. All right, let's um, see if there's any kind of opening cutscene on a, on this on this screen. If I wait, because uh, there's some, you know, obviously on the PS2 there were cutscenes, uh, CG animated cutscenes, etc. And there's something of a plot going on. So let's see how much we get of that here. We might. It might be confined to the manual in this case, possibly. Uh, which is unfortunate because there's no scan of this manual online. I found one for the PS2 game. Um, and, you know, it's going to be the same plot. But it would be nice if there was something. Yeah, not seeing anything. <clears throat> but this tune's nice. Um, yeah, I was tossing up which emulator to use today because I remembered that often the one that's packed in with um, Open Emu is, uh, what's the core that it uses? I think it's um, oh, Gambate, I think. Might be wrong. While we're waiting. There's no harm in looking that up. Yes, it is Gambate. Um, which is quite nice. I recall using it when I was playing Conquest Pocket Tales. Uh, in conjunction with another emulator so that I could do the color version and the monochrome version at the same time. Um, its renderer um, ends up making things look a little dark compared to the other main Game Boy emulator I use, which is KIGB by um, Richard Bannister. But when I loaded this up in, in KIGB, K -I -G -B, um, there were some graphical glitches on the title screen with sprites being rendered incorrectly so I thought that might be a bit risky. I do like the brighter look but I don't know maybe it's too bright whatever. We're not getting anything here so why don't we start the game. Okay that was an interesting use of palettes. All right so here we are. Um, my character is Vicky Grimm and as we've seen recently in certain movies and games, women characters do not use guns, they use bows. That's kind of a trope. Um, and this game is going to be using that. Oh, okay. There's a robot dog. So yeah, giant toy box given. Um, this game is a spin-off of the Army Men franchise. So that was... What the... I don't know what that means. I'm going to go in, I guess. Oh, okay, so that was the end of the level? Let me load back. I'm gonna grab a few more gems first. Oh, I can double jump. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. There was even a little voice clip there. Did you hear that? It's kind of getting overridden in some sound channels, which can be a problem with emulators, but yeah, we can hear that. I can hear that anyway. Hope you can. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's go. So I guess the objective of the game is to collect as many gems as you can while traversing. Oh, now we're in a medieval castle. Whoa, 
All right, this game is not going to give me any context, so I'm going to try and explain it to you. Uh, <laughs> if I can. Oh my goodness. Is this game going to last me five minutes? I'm suddenly worried about that. Um, <laughs> all right, so... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so Gibbon's familiar with army men. For some reason, Vicky, unlike other army men who are, you know, made of green plastic, she actually has a normal, or uh, she's got white skin like a human, <laughs> and just green clothes and green hair. Okay, these knights are giving me some trouble, but I have plenty of arrows. Yeah. So I'm going to have to collect arrows to use my weapon. Um, so yeah, Army Men is a pretty long-running series of mostly strategy games, RTS, um, and third-person shooters. There's a few spin-offs about uh, plane combat. Oh, I didn't make it to that one-up. I feel like we're going to need our one-ups, so I'm going to go grab that. I like the wolf. Nice animation. Um, yeah, so Vicky Grimm is a kind of supporting character in a few of the Army Man games. Uh, can I jump and shoot? Not really, but I can jump. My double jump has a kicking attack that it automatically does. And oh, this is tricky because the bow has a wind up. You see, you have to pull it out and oop, just missed that ghost. Okay. That did not go well for me. I will rewind because I'm a damn cheater. I don't think the ghost is susceptible to my bow. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so Vicky Grimm, um, she's the daughter of like the like uh, what you call it, the top brass Colonel Grimm, who like gives you orders in some of the games. Um, and she's the oop, she's the apparent love interest of um, Sergeant Hawk or Sarge who is the protagonist in a few of the games oh I see my health carries over between levels that's unfortunate um, I also noticed back there when I, an enemy was up close to me she does a punch attack when they're too close to use the bow that's a nice little detail I'm actually pretty impressed with this game so far, <laughs> although I only spent one level in the toy box area and it was really short. Um, so Vicky Grimm, she's a reporter. She's like a war reporter, I guess. Um, this translates into her using a camera in the PS2 version of this game, I think. I'm not 100% sure. I um, only saw a few brief videos of it. Um, but that also makes good use of the bow. Oh. Ow. Ow. Nasty. Yeah, and you get different kinds of arrow ammunition in that version. I don't know how much that's going to carry over here. Um, yeah, it seems to only be the one kind of arrow. See, so yeah, I don't know why, but the girl has realistic skin tone rather than being a simple green plastic figure. Ooh, 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 ah, ah. Yeah, so there's a bunch of Army Man games. This one, it, you know, they were all... Okay, I guess I'll explain a bit about... Okay, so there was a exit back there that cost 5, but this exit cost 10. I wonder if it Oh, it leads me back here. That's interesting. This is kind of a non-linear structure. Given saying he's reminded of the reboot character Andrea. Yeah, I never watched that show, but... Um, the, the Certain of the games certainly have that early 3D kind of look to them, given the era that they were released in. Um... I don't think any of them were actually released on the 3DO, but they were made by 3DO Company. So 3DO Company um, made games for a while and before they decided to try entering the console 
uh, business themselves. And of course, the you may have heard of the ill-fated 3DO console, or as it's known, the 3DO multiplayer... I don't know, the official title is longer and more unwieldy, but... Uh, it's sort of an early CD-ROM based uh, console um, from before the PlayStation, so that was really the first successful, really successful CD based console. Um, and it was known for having like a lot of FMV games like Night Trap and such. Uh, Gex was also launched on that platform, so that was a, the best-selling game for it. In the talk, in the wisecracking talking animal era. Um, so I think the short one is going to come to life and attack me. Yeah, that's odd. Ow, jerk. I need some more of those blue drops to get my health back, which is re represented by bottles for some reason. I guess they could be canteens. There we go. Nope. Ow. Ooh. She has a little attack string when there's an enemy close by with a punch and a kick, which is nice. And I see I can't hit these guys until they're active, and then... I switch to melee, and then the timing is different, so I get hit. <clears throat> um, let's see. So, the 3DO. Uh, between 1993 and 1996, there were about 200 games released for the system, but ultimately it was a big flop, and uh, it was discontinued. It was, a, it was an odd... Um, platform because instead of the company manufacturing consoles and then other people making games for it it was this arrangement where other third parties could manufacture their own like hardware oh was this a looping i didn't realize until now but i think the level design is kind of looping reminds me of um kid icarus of myths and, Monst and monsters which has it's like the original Kid Icarus, where you go off one side of the screen and loop back onto the other. But the actual looping area of gameplay is larger than the size of the screen itself. So it ends up really being confusing because you keep walking and you think you're getting somewhere, but you suddenly realize you've seen this before and uh, it's, it's kind of weird, but it was only a small part of that level, so I think we're past it. But yeah, that's just a weird thing. Okay, so that was a boss, I suppose. This seems like a throne room, so maybe that was the king. Oh well, he's dead now. Let's leave. <laughs> so yeah, um, the lion just kind of shows up. I'll explain about that in a minute, but I don't know. I'll keep talking about 3DO first, I suppose. You know, there were games on it like... Uh, there were a lot of ports. Stuff like Doom and Mist. Oh, nasty. Um, I think Alone in the Dark launched on the 3DO. Uh, either way, that was a pretty uh, groundbreaking for the time early 3D game. Um, but yeah, after the 3DO console went bust, 3DO the company survived and they started making... Uh, games for other platforms um, and Army Man was one of the series that they came up with. Okay, so what does this quiver do? It didn't change any of my totals. Uh, I thought it would be like a pack of arrows, but I guess not. Maybe it increases my maximum arrows? I don't know. Anyway, um, so they made the Army Man games at that point. Um, they also bought some other companies and acquired their IP. Like, they bought New World Computing and got control of the Heroes of Might and Magic series. So 3DO, the company, made a lot of, um, well, not just Heroes, but Might and Magic in general. They made a lot of those games for a while. Um, eventually, 3DO themselves went bankrupt in 2003. Um, and the Army Man series continu itself continued and was made by other people. 
Um, okay, so we're moving to a third kind of realm. Seems to be a woodland setting, possibly the fairy tale place or the medieval place. I guess I was in the medieval place just then. So, uh, Portal Runner's Portal Runner was made before 3DO went defunct, and I guess you don't really need to worry about any of the other Army Men games that came after. The setting of those kind of changes between installments anyway, like the characters I mentioned before, Colonel Grimm, Sergeant Hawk, they're not in all the games, they're in certain of them. And Vicky herself is in some of them. I think her debut appearance, she was kind of just a damsel in distress, of course. Um, but in some of the other games in the series, like the strategy ones, I'm not sure which one, I think it was called Army Men RTS, maybe she was in. And she's just, yeah, like a character in that game, a unit with a gun that runs around and shoots things or whatever. Um, yeah, I agree, actually, given this is a weird spin-off for that series. Kind of a adventure platformer, where most of the other ones are very war-themed, as I said, either strategy or shooter games. Um, the PS2 version of this game is pretty interesting. It's, um, you know, 3D action-adventure kind of thing. You got the bow, you got the lion, who has popped up a couple of times so far. Oh, a wizard, nice, okay. Um, and the lion kind of follows you around as a semi-independent uh, companion character, which I find is a really cool thing whenever it's done well in a game. Um, that specific example reminds me the most of uh, Star Fox Adventures, where you have Fox being accompanied by Tricky. Okay, so there's obviously other paths to go on in this level to get extra collectibles, which I've mostly skipped. Once again, we're going to grab the quiver, not knowing what it does, but yeah. Um, we're just kind of roaming around and randomly warping in. Yeah, the series does, yeah, given saying it has an odd jumble of genres through the whole series. So in that context, I guess having Portal Runner as a action-adventure game is not too unusual, but it is different to every other game in the series. I like that there's, like, a robot dog. That's really cool. Um... I don't know, okay, what should I say next? Um, given that there's, yeah, we're in the giant toy box world now, so of course you'll realize that Army Men, the series, is about um, the little green plastic army guys. I, I thought it might be inspired by a Toy Story where they have a prominent role. Um, and it's, it's kind of that, a similar theme to that where the toys come to life, they have their own lives and battles and struggles away from the knowledge of humans. I don't really know how much humans go, come into it, but we, we obviously do have these areas where it's where toy scale in a, in a normal size world. And I always love games with that kind of theme. Um, you know, stuff like micro machines and things like that. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so we're in a different place, but there's still wolves. It's kind of a swamp. Oh, the wizard's back. I guess this is just the same fantasy world, but night time. Ooh, what's that floating down there? It's the ghost, of course. I haven't found a way to damage it. Nice little, um, what are they called? What's the character in Shop of Horrors? Ooh, that's creepy. A zombie skeleton thing? Interesting. Audrey, yeah. That toothy grin kind of reminded me of the wisecracking nature of the plant in Little Shop of Horrors. Um, okay, I have 50 arrows. I want to test something. Yeah, 50 is my maximum. So even the, all those quivers I got were not actual capacity upgrades, as I thought. So who knows what they are? See, from here we can see an exit, and I still don't know what the progression is. There's no numbers of these levels or anything. The different level 
exits, don't know what they do. As I said, I don't have the manual for this game. Um, and we haven't really seen any semblance of a plot so far, so... Um, maybe I'll get to that next. Um, so Vicky, as I said, she's sort of a love interest for the other character, but she gets a starring role in this game, which is nice. Um, unfortunately, the actual plot of this game boils down to uh, two women fighting over a man, which is unfortunate. Um, kind of stereotype, but at least, you know, we get to play as Vicky. You might have seen the um, box art for this game, which... Uh, <laughs> It's, I don't know, it's a little misleading. Um, there, there's actually a couple that I've seen. One is just Vicky looking straight on and running in like a space uh, jumpsuit kind of thing, which ties into one of the other... Okay, what does this do? Yeah, the, one of the other themes, you'll notice that there's different level themes that we're going through. There's a space one later. I don't know what this meat is for. Okay. Anyway, I'm trying to get to that. 10 gem door that I saw under the level entrance. <clears throat> um, yeah, this thing, what is that? Oh, it's Leo! Hooray! Yeah. Oh, I guess I can't enter the exit. Enter the exit, yeah. Um, while I'm writing Leo. But yes, I've got my claws. Nice stuff. So yeah, like I said, I love any game with an animal companion, and although you don't get to sort of order Leo around like you can in the PS2 version, you can at least ride him. I wonder, I don't think in this version there's the levels where you are playing just as Leo, like there are in, on PS2, but that's okay. I prefer to play as Vicky anyway due to the theme of my streams this year being about women characters. So Vicky is, like I said, her role is somewhat defined by her being uh, an accessory to the main character. Um, uh, accessory, that's funny because she's a toy. Um, uh, stupid robot dogs. But yeah, she gets to do stuff in this game. She's got her bow and arrow. She's got her job as a reporter. Um, but yeah, the, um, I was saying about the plot, oh, actually, because I've got the manual for the PS2 one open here, um, I've got lots of lives, so I guess I don't really need to worry about health. Yeah, so, the plot is, eek, so it involves these portals that, uh, we've been jumping into to traverse between the different worlds. Yeah, the lion makes you feel powerful. Oh, that's what the meat's for. Gives you more time as lion. Riding Leo. And there's some skidding around. I'm gonna want that health. Oops. Yeah, okay, I picked it up. Um, okay, uh, yes, so... Oh, it's a mummy, okay. Um, uh, gosh, sorry. I'm easily distracted. <clears throat> so this game is about uh, this character called Brigitte Bleu, who is a blue army person, kind of. She's said to be a spy of the blue army, Ah, which I don't know if they really pop up in any of the other army men games. I don't know much about them, but there's definitely um, a tan army that I saw mentioned a few times, which is the primary enemy of the green army, who are the usual protagonists. Whoopsie. Okay, double jumps, I like it. I wanted to punch that wizard in his stupid beard. Didn't quite get it. Now, yeah, in the back. Nice. Yeah, so Brigitte Bleu. Um, she apparently found a magic portal thingy or something, and that's what, you know, all these portals are that we're going into. Hence the name of the game as well. Oops. Oops. Boom. Ah, never mind. 
Um, and yeah, she, she finds all these different realms, which are these levels that we're going to. Um, and she wants to rule them all, of course, because she's the evil type. Cool, so that's another boss down. Um, and yeah, so I guess, I don't know if she has magic powers or what. Uh, anyway, she decides to be the queen of all the other realms that she finds. But then she decides that she needs a king to rule with her. And for some reason she chooses Sarge, the army man, man guy with the big square jaw. Um, unfortunately, he's already entangled with Vicky at this point, so. Oh, it's a, it's a symbol monkey on a spring. That's genius. Yeah, so uh, Brigitte uses some kind of like magic sci-fi love ray thing to like scramble his brain and get him to fall in love with her or whatever. Um, and then it's up to Vicky to go and rescue her, uh, boy from her evil spell. I believe that is a tan soldier there. And it's too bad these dinosaurs aren't interacting with me at all. Um, one of the one of the realms um, in the PS2 version at least is the dinosaur realm with lots of uh, dinosaurs to meet and fight which sounded very exciting but I don't think we're really going to get that in this version unfortunately um, there's a lot of an emphasis on these medieval type castles and um, forests and such now we have giant spiders which is nice and by nice I mean horrifying <clears throat> Um, whoop, that. Yeah, the jump kick. Good stuff. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have picked easy. I'm really finding this a cakewalk, but yeah, that's all right. I didn't come here for a challenge. I just came here to be entertained. Oops. And complain about gender roles. Oh, okay, given saying that the transition cutscenes remind him of Lady C art. Yeah, I should play Lady C again on stream because I was impressed by it, but it was one of my very early streams where I didn't um, save the recording because I was unsure about uh, my abilities. I really should have just saved it, but oh well. I, it, it was actually a very long stream when I did it, so I'd probably have to go a bit quicker. It was over three hours long, I believe. Um, but it was a good time. Yeah, check that one out if you want. Um, it's a nice little GBA indie uh, action platformer. Um, yes, okay. So, eep. Oh yeah, deftly dodged. I have quite the surplus of gems at this point. And yes, I've reached the maximum, I see. Oh well, that's cool. Watch out for the boiling oil. Yeah, so I I guess the implication is that the different realms I'm going to are, well, I don't really know actually. I assume they're made of toys, like in the in the Toy Story kind of way, like dinosaurs, knights. It's all common toy fodder, which is a, a cool idea for a game world, and gives them an excuse to have a decent amount of variety in the kinds of levels, right? So that's nice. Um, <laughs> right, right. Gibbon says the different realms are way more interesting than the generic toy box hub. Now, I like the toy box theme. Um, I'm interested that you say it's generic. I don't know. I don't think it's that common in games, but this this seems like it's preparing me for something. Are we up to the final boss already? No, just kind of got a little pickups at once. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I mean, um, whatever. Gonna pass that by. Oh, 
Oh, this way. Oh gosh, what was the thing? Yeah, the toy box. I guess I haven't played too many games with that theme. So I enjoy it when it pops up. And that was a cool move. But yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't put the whole game there. That would that wouldn't be any fun. Having said that, I'm now reflecting on the Toy Story game for SNES. And other platforms, I believe. I think it was on Mega Drive. I had it on PC, actually. Um, so yeah, imagine playing that with the arrow keys and a space bar. It wasn't great. I, th meh, I think I managed to beat it eventually. Probably took a long time. Um, yeah. Okay, Gibbons give me a short list. Let's see if the lion can kill these ghosts. Eh, it doesn't appear to be. Yeah, uh, Kirby has toy box levels, he says. DK Jungle Climber. Yeah, I remember those. Um, uh, DK64, sort of. Yeah, it had the Kremlin Toy Factory. Um, the Toy Story games, various Alice games. Rayman. Oh, yeah, definitely Rayman. That does stick out definitely um he says maybe it just pops up in the sort of games i play yeah now that you mention it i've actually played all these games um oh not alice uh but that's a uh, potential for the list actually given it stars alice of course um but yeah now that you mention it uh i guess it is more common than i thought but i guess it's different here because you are playing as actual toys and it's kind of a proper environment and scale for them which maybe makes it slightly more interesting I don't know uh, let's see so what did I do, 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 do. yeah so the lion um, they're not really gonna address it in this game it seems but when Vicky goes to I think it's the dinosaur realm it's called like lost uh caves or something um she meets the lion there he's you know the king of the jungle or whatever um and he's like oh um i'm gonna help you for some reason um i don't know whatever <laughs> they team up it doesn't really matter um but yeah like i said it's cool to have um yeah to have a companion character a partner character um in any kind of game really I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. So, I guess he just turns up here, yeah. So that's Leo. Um, you, the 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 um, manual for the PS2 game boasts that there's four ways to play. There's four modes of play, um, namely playing as Vicky, playing uh, as Vicky with Leo following you, and you can sort of issue commands to him. Um, and then there's Vicky riding on Leo, which we've seen in this game, but uh, yeah, I'm, I imagine it would be pretty cool in a 3D environment roaming around at speed like that. Um, and then there's levels where you play as Leo by himself. So there's quite a bit of overlap between those four, quote unquote, four modes. Um, oh, I see. So this man's powerful axe will cause boulders to fall down. Oh, spin attack. Yikes. I am enjoying the bosses here. The kind of souped up versions of normal enemies for the, some of them, but pretty interesting attack patterns and stuff, I guess. I don't know, that wizard only had one thing he did. There we go. I guess they're not too difficult is what I appreciate. <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, I'm still just getting over the cold. I got a bit of phlegm. But I heard um, from people who do audio recording that when you're tempted to clear your throat, that actually makes things worse in regards to, uh, well, like talking being able to talk clearly and the better thing to do would be to take a drink of water so I've taken that advice to heart um oh yeah okay no that's 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 interesting 
Gibbon saying um, it seems to him that most games just have a default sort of go-to look for toy box levels and no one ever does actually anything unique with it because they all look the same in whatever game they're in. Yeah, I could see that, definitely. A lot of um, toy construction blocks, obviously, because that facilitates platforming um, in a video game. Um, I mean, this game's got, you know, there you got the, the textures in the background, you got the toy cars in their boxes. The dinosaurs and dragons and stuff, they're just background elements, but they add a bit of flavor, I guess. So. This one's decent as far as that goes. And I, I, like I said, I do appreciate the toy robot dog, particularly. All right, ooh, yes, good, I'm glad. We do have a dinosaur world after all, full of volcanoes and, oh, scorpions. But yeah, we got a pterosaur up there, so that's nice. Take this, ha oh, ha. Ah. Um, by the way, I'll just pause for a second and tell you that the manual has this to say about the dinosaurs. Um, yeah, here we go. Pterodactyls, these magical flying dinosaurs aren't too smart, but when they see you, they may shoot a fireball or two. They're a little meaner than the ones back in our own prehistoric past. Keep an eye on the sky. So there's other... Um, enemies listed in this PS2 manual that I haven't seen in this game yet, such as uh, oh, what are these? Some kind of giant insect. Um, yeah, enemies such as gingerbread men, uh, rock men, <laughs> crossbow men. They all they all end with and men actually, but um, <laughs> there's also things like uh, let's see, raptors. There's some things that I might that might turn up later in a s potential space level. Mmm. Ouch. Okay. So stand on the little rocks. Don't stand in the lava. Oh. Even the babies are harmful to you. Oh yeah. Totally. The idle animation of her patting the lion. Yeah. I should um really watch that next time I find Leo. I love the typical platformer thing. Go to the left of where you start. There's always something there. That's not a hard and fast rule, but some games, they really lean on that. So what is this coming out of the ground here? Some other kind of insect, maybe? I don't know. I wonder what the difference is between normal and hard and easy. Because I'm not having too much trouble, but uh, enemies can have more health. Are there going to be less pickups? Hmm, don't know. All right, here's Leo. So, yeah, out. Hey, yeah, there we go. Let's just watch this. Uh, hang on. I don't know what Gibbon was talking about because she's not doing anything. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. She did do it. You're alright. <laughs> I was going to call you a liar. <laughs> it was, it was. <laughs> uh, funny. Yeah, a lot of meat pickups that I did not get to <laughs> just now. I'm going to kick you. Yeah! That was satisfying. I like that a lot, actually. It's a good way of... Um, yes, there it is. <laughs> Um, yeah, the double jump doubling as an attack is nice. Let's check out her normal idle animations. Um, oh gee, I started, um, so a while back I talked about the box art. I mentioned the alternate box art, but like the main box art that I've seen um, is her and Leo in a dynamic pose with her bow drawn, but she's wearing this kind of, I guess like stereotypical caveman, cave woman, like stone age kind of thing, just like a tiger skin but like a tiger skin bikini skirt. I don't know, it's weird. I like, it's kind of a lump from Arusei Yatsura kind of thing, um, if you get that reference. But it doesn't seem that she has any outfit changes in this version, which is, you know, 
Just one of the things they had to cut, obviously. Yeah. I feel powerful riding Leo through all these hazards. Just smashing through everything. And we got time left over, so I don't know. Yep, one up. That's good. Oh, now i got to go back up. Yeah, animal bodies. Love it. Um, yeah. So that's the main box art is her. With the, um, somewhat revealing animal skin outfit. Yeah, they're really backloading these dinosaur levels. Is the door just right here? No, I want to explore them all first. Oh, maybe this is a boss fight. I gotta take care of all these pterodactyls. They seem to have more health than normal, so. Do a few pot shots here. Get some more up and running. Mm -mm. Dang. Oh man. Okay, don't attack from the front. Yeah. Take that. You mother trying to defend her babies from a yeah, random invader. I'll kill you for that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about the ethics of this. But, you know, they're all toys. They just bash against each other and then fall on the floor. I guess. I don't really know. The other realms apart from the toy box aren't really presented as being toy box, as being, uh, like, toy based. Even though the th by theme, like I said before, Dinosaur, toys, you know, it's a thing. Yeah, yeah take that. Oh. Huh? Okay. Yeah, come get me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that was close, man. Nice jingle. Or is that just music? Eh, that's kind of a winning jingle music jingle slash music. Anyway, um, what else have I started to say and got distracted from? Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Level complete. Hey, more Leo. Give me one up. <clears throat> oh, that's impossible. Wall of dice. Um, I guess I can talk about the developers a bit. Um, so, like I said, the normal or the sort of uh, main quote-unquote version of this game on PS2 was done by the 3DO company, which is, you know, the, they're just called the 3DO company. Um, and, <laughs> well... Uh, so there's a, there's a funny anecdote that is pretty prominently bas basically the only content on um, the Wikipedia article apart from what is obviously the work of some passionate uh, fans entering the whole plot of the game very helpfully and all the machinations as it can, as it uh, as it progresses. Um, but apart from that, in the reception section, you'll find a quite interesting story about uh, uh, yeah, how the, how the game was reviewed by at least one outlet um, GameStop not GameSpot, but GameStop can I climb a vine? I can! oh, and you even slide down if you don't continually climb, that's an interesting little mechanic, see this game has cool ideas um, anyway, GameStop or spot, I forget which one now. Um, <laughs> oh, giant hornet, okay, good. Oh, horizontal vine, I like it. I am a jungle woman. Oh, I can kick down. I never knew that. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, so they reviewed the game and gave it a score of 2.3 out of 5. Now, whether that's, you know, I, I just, yeah, ranking games in numbers, it was never my thing, but, um, what's this? What is that? I want to find out what that is. 
well, it's dead now. Um, <laughs> so the CEO of 3DO Games, uh, one Mr. Trip Hawkins, who, by the way, also founded EA Electronic Arts, like back way back when they were, um, you know, making games for. Oh, my first death. Interesting. Um, yeah, ba back when EA was, you know, much... Well, it's, it was pretty different from the way it is now. Oh man, it's reset all my collectibles. Interesting. Maybe there'll be an actual challenge now. Interesting. I'll have to search for things. Nuts. Uh, yeah, so Trip Hawkins. Um, I don't know what that was. I think that was a raptor. Nice. We're getting raptors. I'm very impressed. Uh, so... Yeah, Trip Hawkins' response to this uh, scathing 2.3 out of 5 review was to write an email to GameStop, uh, which they were so incensed by that they published the entirety of it on online. Um, <clears throat> and <laughs> so the gist of his email was that he was very upset that they'd reviewed the game badly and he was sort of threatening them using his leverage as the owner of a of 3D or the games company and it's kind of this you know whole idea of the incestuous industry where they're reviewing things but they're also accepting money from the companies that they're reviewing for because of advertisements so in his email he's sort of saying oh we're one of your biggest advertisers and because of this review we're going to scale back our uh, our advertising in your magazine or whatever it was, website? Yeah I guess it's a website um, so yeah it's one of those quote unquote ethics in uh, games journalism things uh, except well okay, I'm, forget I said that um <laughs> Like, the fact is, GameStop was not uh, cowed by his threats, right? Or his monetary, like, uh, stake. They didn't change their review in secret. They didn't, uh, you know, prioritize the advertising dollars. They, in fact, published this exchange online for us to enjoy. Seeing people try to use their power and influence to um, yeah change the thing stuff that sentence got away from me um, but anyway the point is that it's a fun story I guess but like I, it has a happy ending because the information was uh, made public and this Trip Hawkins guy was made to look like kind of a douche so that's nice because what he did was um, unethical oops I was pressing the wrong button trying to kick like this yeah <clears throat> anyway um, yeah stuff oh that was a good quote GameStop's customers are its advertisers, not its readers, says Trip Hawkins in the email. Um, and I guess GameStop, despite there actually being some truth to that, uh, ostensibly disagreed, I suppose. Um, yeah, I don't know. Enough of that. Let's talk about this version of the game. So, on the Game Boy Color, 3DO contracted. Whoa, boy! This guy. That is pretty nicely animated, I guess. Nice full-grown raptor. Not these babies we've been fighting up till now. So this is our next boss fight. Oh, it just laid an egg. Okay, so this is Mama Raptor. An egg very, very quickly hatched. Um, and we're gonna ruthlessly murder all her babies in order to lure her down here so then we can kill her. 
our hero Vicky Grimm, ladies and gentlemen. But you know, it's okay to kill dinosaurs. Given says these worlds are so random. Yeah, we got the fantasy medieval world, the dinosaur world, there's a space world later. Yeah, there we go. I wonder if there's a list of worlds in this manual. Uh, I don't see one. Let me tell you about Leonardo the Lion. Strength, courage, and pride make up the character of this ferocious king of the wild. Etc. Uh, Etc. Et blah blah blah. <clears throat> yeah, I think I explained everything about Vicky from her bio there. Ah, cool. Do do do. Yep. Yeah, so handheld games. Um pretty interesting company. They're one of those companies that just does a lot of, well, by their name you would uh, kind of assume that they make games for handheld consoles, and yes, they do in fact. Um, but yeah, there's like ports and stuff. They did a version of, um, oh gosh, I didn't write it down now, I don't remember, whatever. I, I noticed that their first game was um, a port of Centipede, which is a game I played uh, a few weeks ago as part of the uh, spotlighting early game developers stream. Um, yeah, we, we mentioned during that how many different platforms Centipede had been ported to. They, uh, handheld games uh, company thing, <laughs> had the uh, dubious honor of porting Centipede to, oh gosh. Oh, I guess the grenade bounced on this die just here. Yeah, I guess that's what happened. Yeah, so they had the dubious honor of porting um, Centipede to the tigergame.com. Ooh, we're in space now. Nice. This is possibly our last environment. Nice little tank robot. I like the design. <clears throat> yeah, so if you don't know, Tiger's Tiger Electronics, uh, they made a lot of LCD handhelds uh, back in the day. You know, 90s kids will definitely remember these uh, top 10 reasons why Tiger LCDs were the bomb. Buzzfeed.com. Oh, what's this? Aliens. So they might be Martians. Let me read you what this says about Martians. Martians are... Uh, oh gosh. Um, the text is really low res. I'm having trouble. Pointy? Pasty? Party? Potty? Puny. Well, whatever they are, they're little fellows that have a tendency to follow the strongest leader they meet. They don't look too tough, but they're armed with ray guns that can be dangerous. So, they are apparently from Mars. There you go. Mars is inhabited with uh, sentient life after all. And not just sentient life, but sapient life. I was um, reminded of this recently by something or other. That sentience just means that you can respond to stimuli, basically. So, things like... Uh, cats are sentient in that definition and washing machines and I don't know, stuff like that but sapience is more like intelligence and human level uh, oh here we go we got a choice that one is free this one is also free oh gosh, well I guess we'll just pick one <gasps> it's not the end of the level it's an intra-level portal warp interesting ah Oh, I see. I thought the heads were on fire, but it's kind of a bulbous head that's strangely shaped. Okay, I can pass that sprite now. All right. It's just like Bubsy space level with all the warps. Okay, I like the music here too. Uh, anyway, um, the game.com. So Tiger Electronics, um, they, you know, they made these little... LCD things, which are, you know, Game & Watch, whatever, simple gameplay, uh, very basic, like, calculated graphics that have certain sprites that it switches between. Um, lots of franchises got these Tiger handhelds. Oh, this is an interesting guy. Apparently, psychic powers? Will not stop an arrow to the head. Um, yeah, so eventually Tiger decided to, as 3DO did, enter the console market themselves and they made a dedicated handheld that could 
have different games swapped out to it. It was still black and white, um, but it had like an actual screen, I guess, that can, it's made of pixels that can change to display things. I'm not gonna explain to you how screens work, but um, see, we've got two new enemy types here right now. This floating robot guy and this gun turret. One is obviously more interesting than the other, but. Yeah, so the game.com, <laughs> even less successful than the 3DO. Uh, it, it got a few ports of things, but um, I think just nothing in that era could compete with the Game Boy, so it didn't last very long. But yeah, Centipede was on it, and it was thanks to the f good folk at uh, Handheld Games. <clears throat> but yeah, they've done other things on the GBA, on the DS. Uh, I think their last thing listed on Moby Games was an Imagine title, of course, Ubisoft's huge Imagine series, um, something about music they did. Um, they also, I noticed, they didn't just do uh, games for dedicated handheld consoles, they did a Java phone game for Ratchet and Clank, so even projects like that. And once again, the world of uh, Java mobile phone games is a fascinating and lost era that is fun to um, investigate. Um, yeah. But yeah, the handheld games, they're not around anymore. Okay, now it's just a maze, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. We'll kill little green men to mark where we've been. And their robot servants. Ooh, ooh. Come on. No, couldn't get the arc right. Here we go. Headshot. Yeah, they're not they're not dead because they just teleport away. Did you see that? Yeah, that's right. They're fine. No no killing, no violence, it's fine. It's a kid's game. And they're all toys anyway, maybe. Uh, what? Um, my controls aren't responding. Oh, my controls out of battery. That explains it. All right, I will switch to keyboard. I guess I haven't charged that controller in a while. That was a nasty surprise. Down, I say, down. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, yes, okay, take that. So let's see now, what was I saying? I guess I was done with that thread. How long have we been going? Almost an hour. I have a feeling, I had a feeling that this would be a short game, but that works for me because I gotta drive somewhere this afternoon for three hours, go back to my hometown to visit family over Easter. So yeah, we're leaving a bit early. We took some time off work to have more of a long weekend. A long weekend that lasts almost five days, I think. Yeah, Easter. That's a thing that happens. Um, do you get a public holiday on Good Friday in America? It's on April Fool's Day this year. Oh gosh, yeah, I think you're right, actually. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it's very early this year. Um, so yeah, I've bought all my chocolate eggs, of course. Um, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what Easter means. <laughs> uh, I don't, like, for our family, it also means like church and stuff, but I think, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> Let's not get too personal, but. Oh, nice alien. Thumbs up, I approve. Doo -doo. Yeah, Good Friday services are always interesting because it's one of those times of year when you get a lot of people who don't usually go to church come, like it's the twice a year people, Christmas Day and Good Friday. 
Um, of course, we're often visiting family, so we're often not attending our normal church at all, so yeah. Ooh, nice. Luxury chocolate egg baskets Gibbons got on the way. Yeah, I just grabbed whatever was in the supermarket. <laughs> there's, there's some decent variety, depending on when you get to go. The, there was some slim pickings, actually, by the time I did the majority of my egg shopping the other day. Because I left it a bit late. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's true. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, bring up your unemployment again, but surely you've had uh, other experiences with public holidays in the past. It's like, like I said, with Christmas and Easter, like it's also one of the very few public holidays in general where all the shops are closed so that can be disruptive um, if you're not prepared for it mm, luxury chocolate egg baskets from a chocolatier shop you're making me jealous now oh that's a wall I guess this this green thing yeah that's a wall didn't super look like one but we'll go with it does it mean this is a platform I can't really tell at this point oh okay I can go this way yeah sometimes that can be a problem oh and that's a wall too of course yes yeah so I got my big spreadsheet of games that I want to play on stream that I pick out from and there's a column that has a checkbox for whether there's a companion animal in the game <laughs> it's just one of the several criteria that I use to keep track of um, games so I was thinking about pairing this up with something else where you have a, an animal friend but maybe not today but yeah, Leo is a good addition to the game, I think, even though in this game he's basically a glorified power-up. Whoa, hello! We got a Kung Fu alien over here. Oh, oh gosh. Um, yeah, I'm starting to remember why I don't like playing games on keyboard, because my wrists are really killing me after only a few minutes of play like this. I, I, I really gave myself... Uh, I don't know, maybe some RSI problems at some point from using my computer in a weird way, so just playing this game right now, my wrists are just killing me. Um, hmm. Yeah, which is too bad. Maybe if it goes on for much longer, I'll grab my other controller. But yeah, I'll definitely have to charge that up soon. Oops. <sighs> yep, I'm back up to 50 uh, gems and 50 arrows. These space backgrounds are kind of a mess, but I do love them, actually. Complex and detailed, but maybe a bit too complex. Like you saw, I did have some trouble finding my way around the collision earlier. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this game, actually. Um, although less of... I mean, uh, so reading about the features of the PS2 version, not that many of them came over to this game in terms of Leo being a partner. The whole plot of the game is just completely absent. Um, 
but I am kind of interested to check out the main version. Especially given that I will soon have a PS2 of my own. Oops. Yeah, let's just uh, cheat our way out of that one. Yeah, it'll be my birthday soon and I'm getting a PS2 for my birthday. Second hand, obviously. Um, but the main reason I wanted it is to play Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future. Ooh! Which is the 3D Echo the Dolphin game for Dreamcast and PS2. Because I've decided to really go all in on this dolphin thing for myself. Um, I'm going to find a copy of Shamu, Deep Sea Adventures. Um, oh, you even slide down when climbing a ladder. That's weird. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, I've actually got a short list of um, games to play on a part two dolphin showcase, which I'm looking forward to, but it's not quite fleshed out enough for a full showcase just yet. Um, but there's a few notable ones on there. I have to find some more. Mm, I'm a bit lost right now, but I kind of have a handle on the structure here, so I'll go back this way. Ow. That robot's faster than me. But I have superior human ingenuity. Okay, so now I'm going this way, I guess. But that's kind of a dead end. Hmm. Um, oh, I can climb this? I thought it was like a waterfall. Although what a waterfall is doing in a spaceship, I do not know. So I suppose that was foolish of me. Oh, so much damage. Let's reverse a little bit. Get to this point. Yeah. I can't c continue going up there. I guess I'll go this way. Now that I know I can climb these. Really? Is, does that look like something you can climb? Really? Tell me I'm not crazy here. See, this is a ladder, obviously. Maybe it's kind of a gravity lift thing like they have in Halo. They probably have them elsewhere, but you know, I know Halo. I know Halo 1 and 2 at least. I haven't barely as much as touched any of the other games in the series. I know given you were talking about doing like a series playthrough, right? You were asking what order you wanted to do them in? I said do them chronological, and then I added that of course Marathon prece precedes them in uh, certain ways and then um, you got to play myth as well Bungie's earlier uh, PC strategy duology set in a fantasy world because of a single musical Easter egg in Halo 1 which is a lot of fun to find actually oops yeah cool stuff um I actually considered playing Marathon on stream one time because it's one of the, I don't know, because it's easy enough to play. Uh, does Oni have any connections? Uh, not that I know of, um, but it's still worth playing anyway, I suppose. Um, oh, right. <laughs> so Gibbon says he was thinking about that because uh, he was in the running for a job at 343. This level's huge. Um, Maybe it feels bigger because I got lost, but oops. She has a really squeaking. Uh, <laughs> nice animations on that alien, I like that. Oni is on the shelf, okay. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't want to add to your massive backlog of games to play, but it's not the best game, really, um, but it's pretty decent. This looks like a boss arena. This looks like the Emperor's throne room from Star Wars or something. 
Who's this guy? Oh, I know who this guy is. Um, how many arrows do I start? Ten. Uh, let's see if I can do it with that. Otherwise, I'll leave back. So this guy must be Rage the Warbot, who is a an antagonist in the Army Man series. Uh, like a robot toy who is an enemy of the army men. Oh, looks like I uh, busted up his AI there, something fierce. Yeah. Um, and his head fell off. Whoa, okay, hang on a sec. I want to see this properly because that looks cool and I don't want to just waste it by him walking into a wall. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, punch me. Yeah, nice. Let's have a proper fight. Hey, buddy. Yeah. There we go. Head comes off. Head turns into spider. That's amazing. I love that. Okay. Kick. Nope. Missed him. Oh, nasty. Oh, and it jumps. Yeah, take that. Oh, I'm out of arrows. Okay. Ow. No! Um, yeah, so this guy is Rage. Rage is Brigitte's right-hand bot. Chief enforcer, brutal thug, and all-around evildoer. Rage will stop at nothing to please his queen. He is a callous and fierce war bot, and will fight to the bitter end to make sure that Vicky and Leo stay trapped in the Lost Worlds forever. So that's his story. Um, I don't know. I don't think his toy-like nature really comes through too well with these sprites, but... It's a good concept. It's kind of the Toy Story concept, really. Um, the old-style toys supplanted by the new space-themed toy, you know. It's all that kind of thing. Yeah, kick. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, got him. Good times. All right. Let's go, Leo, wherever you are. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about this art. It's really heavily compressed. Oh, no. You're kidding. It's going to lock me out of an ending if I don't do in the right difficulty setting. Game over. Well, I know what I have to do. I have to use the password function. All right, let's do this. Password. I'm gonna look some up right now. <laughs> yeah, wow, huh? I hate when games do this. Deprive you of the true ending. Yeah, Given said exactly the same thing, just, to, just as I said it. Yes, Portal. This game is not in the Portal series. This game is Portal Runner. There's an entry for it for GBA, but I, don't, I think that's erroneous. Okay, cheats. Uh, luckily, we have a full list of passwords here. Oh, here's one that'll take us to a test map. Let's just do that. That sounds fun. Um, I'll do that right now. NBD, bro. NBDL. Continue. Nice! Look at this! Oh, damage blocks. So the down arrow means I can jump up through it. What does this mean? Uh, same thing, but it's... Um, got, yeah, stuff. Terrain. So this is a vine. This is a ladder. Ah, uh, yes, you don't fall down on the ladder. But I did fall down on that one ladder in the spaceship. Maybe it was incorrectly programmed. So now we got the climbing bit. Ooh, I'm going to climb at an angle. Mmm, beautiful. This is pretty cool. <laughs> ah, I love this debug test map stuff. Did I win? <laughs> uh, cool. How do I go down in the ladder? Is this Castlevania? I can't get down. That's annoying. Yeah, it's okay. If a game with a password system does it, I guess it's not too bad. We could just skip to the ending. So that's a wall. All right. Well, that was fun. Um, I have to reset now. Okay. So let's get the real passwords. Oh man, there's even more. 
object tests. There's other test levels too. Look at that title screen. You can imagine what it was supposed to look like on there. PS2. Or indeed the box art. Alright, let's go to another test level. Oops. Yep. P. D. J. T. So this is object test one. <laughs> object test one. So we've got the scorpion. Okay. Yeah, take that. So they're testing scorpions in this level, I guess. But this one has music. Um, still a completely untextured room. Oh, that's the end. Oh, it wasn't that fun. All right. Uh, let's not do any more of those tests. Oh boy, there's a lot of levels here. Um, okay, I think we can go to... Well, we'll have to change the options first, of course. So, normal. And then, we enter the password. Um, Not all characters here, which is um, distracting. Yes. Okay, so now we're back in space, I guess. Let's try and detect what the difference is between easy and normal. And also try and detect whether this is actually the same level we were on before or not. This is the latest one that I found on the list. This is 36. Oh, it seems like I can skip straight to the spaceship battle, which must be that boss fight. Yeah, I'm gonna do that instead. Uh, let's have a look around this level first a bit. It's only, uh, it's only quarter past two. I'm afraid I'll take up a little more of your time. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that one ladder, ladder was incorrectly programmed because that ladder works like a ladder. But the other one I found did not. Oop. Oop. Oh, and that one doesn't either. Did it? What happened? Ah, yeah, whatever. Maybe I was at the edge of the lava? Uh, who knows. Oop. Nope. Oh, there's a dive kick. I didn't even know about that. Man, hang on a second. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. So you hit the jump button a, an additional time in the air after you've done the jump kick and you'll do like a diving slide kick thing. Ow. Like this. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, let me try again. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's not too detectable, but it's cool. Yeah. Oh, is that a dead end? Aha. Hey, you. Yeah. Maybe on normal mode, they just don't throw as many arrows at you. Ah, Kung Fu Alien again. Let's go back and use that other password. Okay, and it was um, NTTL. 
Handheld games. Beautiful artwork. Okay. So. Yes, here we are. Back in Star Wars Throne Room. Is this the right music? Was there a boss theme? I don't even remember now. Hey, Bucko. Yep, still five shots to kill the boss, so difficulty does not affect boss health, apparently. Oops. Yeah. Timing. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Alright. What does the game have in store for us on normal mode? The same interstitial cutscene. Yep. Okay. I am playing normal mode. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Am I not playing normal mode? Whoops. Hang on. Oh, I guess I wasn't. Maybe there's unique passwords. All right, I'm gonna try that one more time. N T T L continue. Okay, so now I'm here. So now if I reboot and go to options. Yeah, it's sent back to easy. So passwords have difficulties built into them. Oi. Uh, okay. What does that mean exactly? Oh, there's a level select cheat. Yes, okay, let me try that. Tasty, or toasty, possibly. Aha, testy. Okay, so now from here we can select any of the beta, um, like, test maps. Knight's Chamber, Forest, Evil MR Wizard. wonder what that stands for. This is pretty interesting. <gasps> Maybe it's Evil Mr. Wizard. That's his name. Uh, the Executioner. Oh, we get to see all the names of the bosses. This is fantastic. Volcano, Pterodactyl Brood. Yes, good. Jungle, Raptor Lair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spaceship Battle. Then Land of Toys. And then back to object test. Okay. Yeah, this is great. Thank you, game facts. Thank you, uh, Mesmerize99 and Luigi-san. Uh, yeah, the, t the toasty level select. All right, so I'll select Spaceship Battle. I'll say start map. And let's see if we can get it this time. For the third or fourth time, we're going to kill this rage warbot. Yeah, he's got a rest after his charge attack. Yeah, take that. Wouldn't have restarted the battle the first time if I knew how many times I'd be fighting him. Pow. Ow. Hmm, I feel like arrows do a lot more damage than the hand-to-hand -hand combat. What? Surely by now. 
Okay. <gasps> I can even Arangil this. Man, I'm learning so many things about this game at the 99% point. I'm kind of dumb. Like, this game is a little more deep than I gave it credit, I guess. Uh, oop. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Ouch. Okay. Let's rewind a bit. I think this is on normal mode right now because I think it has more health than it had before. Yeah, angling the bow, like the jump kick. Oops. Hmm. All right, let's be a little smarter this time. Hey, you. Oops, that wasn't smart. I was just playing around. Yeah, kick, 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 double kick. Too much kicks. Run away. Nope. I want to experiment more with this aiming. Yeah, nice. Nope. Oh, hold on. Oh, I even shot it straight up and it came down. That was beautiful. Oh, and I hit myself. Wow. I'm so impressed with this game. I love it. Hey, buddy. Kick. Punch. It's all in the mind. Speaking of that, Umjamalami, definitely on my list. Yeah, I'm gonna save my arrows for the spider phase, I think. Because this one's easy to punish. Oops, it's alright. Okay, that's not alright. That's a heck of a jump you got there, spider. lag to deal with. Not to mention me getting too greedy. Common boss fight problem. Maybe the spider has to rest after a jumping attack? Yeah, a little bit. There you go. That's the resting sprite. Ooh. <gasps> that was the last hit. Yes. Oh, me hands. All right, let's do this. What happens next? Save. Something's got to happen. Something must happen. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> uh. Um, I'm not even mad. I should be, but um, <laughs> I'm just amused and bemused. Well, let me see here. There was another cheat for like extra goodies. Let me see if I can figure that out. 
Extra points, power up. No, that's not right. And what has gone on? All right, <sighs> time for the ultimate challenge. We will go on to hard mode. <sighs> Oops, not cards. No, stop, stop. Okay, hard mode. We're gonna go back there gonna do this properly. <sighs> Alright, 10 arrows only. Be prepared for the slog. Save my arrows for the spider once again. Don't get greedy. The true Dark Souls begins now. And much like Dark Souls, we have some exploitable AI. Oh no, don't run away. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's the way. Let me get a few good shots in. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Nope, that's not fine. This is hard mode after all. <laughs> uh, yep, okay. I can get that full four combo in, but not if I have to approach him as well. So I'll do the three there. Nope, I still got the four. What do you know? Yep, so I'm beating up a robot. Um, okay, good. What can I say at this point? Um, I don't know. What's your favorite woman with a bow and arrow in a video game? Don't say the new Tomb Raider. Actually, yeah, you're allowed to do that. Whoops. Ah, oh, I can't even get the shot off. Oh no. Where have my vaunted skills gone? Well, they were never there to begin with. Oh no. Go under the spider. Good answer. Gibbon nominates the archer from Gauntlet. But he's gonna think about it. Yeah, I should probably think about it more too. Oops. Um, let's see, the thing that comes to mind is um, Call from Mighty Number no. 9 because what weapon she wields was part of a backer, Kickstarter backer survey. And I thought the bow was like, the lazy option because it was just like tying into this theme, this trope that was so common at the time, but I guess it was a trope because people like it, so it was the popular choice and it won. Um, it's just kind of like, it, you saw it a lot in movies at the time as well, like, um, what's that one with the, is it, is it, um, the Hunger Games she has a bow I don't know that kind of thing I think that's the one that really popularized it for a, for a time um, in popular culture but it was it's certainly been a trope are you serious is that it it just changes the oh my god what what Okay, breathe. So, 
I believe what the ending message was trying to convey was that for a greater challenge on the player's part, they should repeat the game on a higher difficulty now that they've conquered it on the lower difficulty. It was never meant to imply that anything would change in the ending when you beat it at the higher difficulty. Oh my god. I can't believe I just did that stupid battle three times in a row. Um. Wow. Yep. I well the ending's text did change. Um What a kick in the nuts or equivalent. Uh Anyway, um oh, Cambodians here. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the end. Uh it was a it was a good stream for the most part, but the end was pretty frustrating, I got to say. Uh he's contributing that his favorite um archer is the Hexen 2 assassin. Good answer. Hexen um first person game of course from the 90s on computers oh boy um yeah i gotta f there's nothing more to do with this game so that's the end um i really should have brought up this this uh name and archer thing earlier because i think it's a rich vein but um there's there's nothing more for me to do on stream so um yeah there's your homework i guess we'll talk about it next week yeah i don't know i'll see if i've got any more archer games to play next week <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Um, Gibbon's a big fan of American McGee, and he's saying that that's where he uh, Hexen is where he got uh, his start in the games industry. So, yeah, cool stuff. Um, so yeah, so that was Portal Runner. Um, yeah, uh, this game was pretty interesting for, you know, an 8-bit platformer. It was colorful. It had some cool little mechanics and um, controls and stuff, which was nice. But maybe the PS2 version is a much better fleshed out game as an experience um i'll never know unless maybe i can never know well we'll see so that's it for this week thank you very much for joining me um and we'll see you next time for another game i'll maybe i'll try and get another bow and arrow game um since i claimed it was such a common trope it should be easy to find right we'll see so until then uh, have a good uh, Easter. Yeah, see you later. <laughs>